We had assassinations. We had riots. We had birth control pill. We had the anti-war movement. We had the civil rights movement. It just was a soup that was about to boil over. kids who were, I think, deeply misunderstood, myself included, by their parents who were deeply threatened by uh, birth control pills, uh, free love, sex, marijuana, the fact that the kids didn't want to serve in the war. It was a generational shift. And the recognition that you were in a field with a half a million people with a similar point of view was profound for so many people. Uh, young people were trying to get old people to understand how they felt. Um, and the, the music at, of that time was a great source of, of trying to figure out how young people felt. Perhaps the year's most incredible event was the Woodstock Music and Art Festival in New York's Catskill Mountains in late August. It was a gathering of the hippie element with leading rock performers, the advertised attractions. Promoters rented land from a dairy farmer and made plans for a turnout of 120,000 for the three-day event. But 400,000 of the now generation turned up. They came by car, truck, bus, and hitchhiker's thumb. When traffic became hopelessly tangled, they traveled on foot. Torrential rains turned the area into a swampland. There was a shortage of food and sanitary facilities, and no shelter except for makeshift tents. Most could not get close enough to the stage to hear the performers, and the size of the throng made it impossible for the promoters to police the gate. Drugs were so prevalent that one youngster said you could get high just by breathing. It's funny about Woodstock because it's literally a symbol of hope, of optimism. And it comes at a time where already a lot of things had really gone wrong. There were a lot of reasons at Woodstock to say, boy, you know, we're really losing the battle here. You know, the, the, the system is winning and we're losing. There, there was every reason for people to really worry that that's where the country was going. For a minute, we were hopeful. For a minute, we were not facing the Vietnam War. For a minute, we were not facing losing the Kennedys. For a minute, Dr. King's death wasn't hanging over us. For a minute, we were behaving like decent human beings. That's where the significance is. There was no merchandise to buy. There were no sponsors. There were no drinks. It turned out there were no bathrooms. There were no cell phones. It was people being together in an environment, loving often each other, loving um, the music, which was the glue that brought them there, and loving being a part of a shared community that uh, had an idea that they wanted a different kind of world that they wanted to live in. The emotional connection is that I witness that hu humans can coexist with unity and harmony in a splendorous way. Like uh, when the Berlin Wall came down, Mandela was free. And when we celebrated the year 2000, from Australia all the way to Honolulu, with just uh, happiness and joy. It is an abbreviated way of describing a gathering that's peaceful and loving, in which nothing untoward happens, that happens spontaneously. Despite all the hardships, despite all the potentials for violence, one police official said he had never seen so many people in so small an area act so peacefully. What did it all mean? Was it revolution or a picnic? Sociologists are still pondering. I'm sure at that time, the Manson murders were not immediately understood for what they were. At the time, it was just it was a crime story. But I don't think they knew right away that it was this kind of crazed, quasi-hippie cult that had done it. And I think one of the arguments you could take from it was, 
which event was pointing more towards the future? Was it Woodstock or was it what happened with Manson? Some things get more interesting with time, if only because you have what happens in the moment and then you have what happens after. The Altamont concerts that the Rolling Stones did was December of 1969. It's only three months later. And there were people who will tell you who were at both shows, they'll say, boy, there's, this show is different. There's something different going on here. This is, this is not what um, you know, I was expecting. A lesson, if there is one to take from that, is you can't plan euphoria. Things tend to happen spontaneously. You can only just be open to that. Everything today is organized down to the last detail. When you go to a show, you've got your parking pass, you've got your VIP access, you've got your bathroom access, you've got the stamp on your hand, you pass through seven lines of security. None of that happened at Woodstock. It was spontaneous and it was loving and it was community. So what happens now, and it's to take nothing away from it, it just isn't Woodstock.